Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today we're talking about pH meters and specifically one pH meter. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, it's huge. Running 30% subscribers, which is awesome. Feel free to kill the red button down below, make it gray so that way it doesn't stick out and bother you or is distracting. I'm like a lot of the home brewers out there. I've bought the cheap $12 pH tester and been like, God, this thing just sucks. It's all over the place. It doesn't seem to ever make sense. You know, I'm checking distilled water. It, nothing ever makes sense. So I don't know if I threw it away or threw it in a box, but a waste of money and even a bigger waste of time. I've been seeing a lot of people out there talking about, oh, I like this, oh, I like this, oh, buy this, oh, buy that. Well, it's easy to tell somebody to buy something if it's not their money. Correct? Yeah. I'm not doing medical examinations. I'm not a medical researcher. I don't need the hundred to a thousand dollar pH tester. I need something inexpensive that's reliable and I know quality, but hands down, I've been using this for a while, the doctor pH meter, and it's worked great for me up until recently. And I'll explain why it runs about 30 bucks. You can get it on Amazon. Yes. I'm going to put a link down there, throw me a couple of nickels. But right now I think it's $32 and it's got 5% off, which brings it back close to 30 bucks. I'd buy another one in a heartbeat if I ever have a problem. It comes with some spare batteries. It comes with little pH buffers. And of course you're gonna to need to buy some more of these. They recommend calibrating this thing once a week. You don't need to, unless you're gonna be brewing then calibrate it that day. If you're brewing back to back, let it go, you're fine. It's just a matter of accuracy. This thing is supposed to be accurate to 0.01. I have seen things about when you're calibrating, they say that it's 0 0.03, so I don't know what's true and what's not true. What irritated me is that I've calibrated this thing before and not really thought, thought much of it, but if you've seen their instructions, which for the love of God are microscopic, I literally think I need a microscope to read this, forget the magnifying glass, which I have, with the light. Yeah, no, this, this is insane, it's so tiny. And I was watching a video about it on YouTube and said, hey, huh, this guy seems to know what he's talking about. I'll just listen to him, write it down and go do it. And, you know, I want to calibrate it and everything. He was so wrong. I had a, I literally, I went, and this is the way I am, went to bed after calibrating it, woke up. And in my head, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. How did he save any of the settings? Wait a minute. There's no way that's correct. Then I was doing some testing today and I'm like, these numbers are just way off. It's not making any sense. I'm adding more alkaline, it's not going up. I'm adding more acid, it's not going down. Something's not right. So yeah, I sat and read that with a magnifying glass and then I blew it up on my copier. It's a little cheap all in one, nothing fancy. And specifically, it says to do a three point calibration, it tells you exactly what to do. And I'm gonna show you the correct way to calibrate this thing. So that way you don't have the headache I had. And yes, I told you anything I'm drinking commercially, I'll let you know. This is the Raspberry Beret. We'll play it on prints there, I guess. But it's from Flying Fish, inexpensive, really good beer. And I mean, it's got raspberry smell all over it. Very light drinking, very mild. It says it's a Belgian style wit with raspberry and 5% ABV. So very sessionable. But I have my water, it's sitting at about 77.8, should be about close to 77 right now. I'm gonna add, and this is what you need to do, add 250 milliliters of distilled water to each of your containers and make sure that your containers can hold 250 milliliters. 250 milliliters is slightly more than eight ounces. So if you think eight ounces is 250 milliliters, you're off. There we go, there's one. You might be asking yourself, I have three solutions, but I have four cups. Why does he have four cups? Well, we're gonna rinse our pH meter probe off in distilled water. Why are we using distilled water? Well, distilled water does not have fluoride. Fluoride, from everything I've read, is extremely damaging to the probe on a pH meter. Not to mention any other minerals can damage it over the long haul calcium, things like that. This one doesn't have to be 250 milliliters. This is just what we're going to use to rinse off the probe. Nothing special. So the probe is right here. It's very easy. Also, if you want to change your Fahrenheit and Celsius, I'll show you. I'm going to put a camera over here so you can see a little bit better of what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just dump the solutions in. 
and we'll stir them up afterwards. Always shake them. There is a tear spot on these things. This is 4.01. So be careful, otherwise you can lose some of the powder and you don't want to do that. You dump it in. So 4.01 would be our acid. The 6.86 is almost neutral. As everybody says, seven is neutral. Or should say middle. Make sure you get everything out of the bag that you can. Well, you know you're getting all of the buffers in there. And as you'll see, the packets say 25 degrees Celsius. That is approximately 77 degrees Fahrenheit for the Imperial system. We'll just do like that. That way there's no confusion to what we got going on. We'll stick this one in here, get some as you may see on one camera, the stuff settles down the bottom and you've got to stir it in. It takes a few, I'm going to say a couple minutes to get it all dissolved as much as possible. You may not get everything dissolved, but try to get the majority dissolved before you start calibrating your pH meter. And you can always have a beer while you're waiting for it to dissolve. You can reuse the pH calibration, but it will degrade and you will have to seal it up. I wouldn't recommend more than a day. They'll tell you a couple days, but it's all about accuracy. So, you know, stuff's pretty inexpensive. You get 15 tests for, I want to say, I want to say it was about 10 bucks, 20 for about $11. So that's five tests, 15 packets. So you got three of each. It's not too bad. Okay, I don't think it's gonna get much better unless I wait a long time. So we're gonna simply take this out, put it in our distilled water. I'm gonna turn it on, see what it reads. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's way off. It's, well, it's at nine and jumped to eight and it's going down fast, but I'm okay with that. I'm not really gonna worry. I'm gonna take these wood sticks out and we're gonna go ahead and calibrate it. So according to the instructions, the calibration is a three point calibration, which means you should be using 6.86, 4.00, which is 4.01 here, and 9.18, which we do have. Solutions separately, but with the same procedure. Prepare your 6.86, which we did, which is in the middle. Standard buffer solution, which it doesn't say right here, but the standard buffer solution says 250 milliliters, which you can read on that camera. And it says to press the on off switch to turn it on, insert your pH compound electrode, which is kind of funny, insert the pH compound electrode, the pH compound. First, let me show you something real quick, okay? If you wanna change from Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit, you hit both buttons, give it a second, let it come on. Okay, and you'll see it says Fahrenheit or it says Celsius. Hit the calibrate button for about a second, a whole second to two seconds, and it's gonna change to Celsius. I hold it again for about a second and it hits Fahrenheit. That's all you have to do. And then you hit it again to turn it off. We're gonna turn it on. It's gonna give us some crazy reading of whatever the air is. Wow. Okay, it's dropping down pretty fast. I'm gonna stick it in the 6.86 solution. And I'm gonna hold the calibrate for three seconds. One, two, three. And then the calibrate came up. Leave it alone, boom, it says six point, there it goes, 6.87, that's close enough. SA, it's saving it, and it's done. Okay, you wanna take it out, you wanna rinse it off, and then you wanna to go to the four solution. Same thing, hit calibrate, hold it for three seconds, boom, it pops up, says calibrate. And boom, it fixes it to 4.00 and it's saving it. Done. Okay, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna put it in the fresh distilled water, rinse it off. I'm gonna put it in the 9.18. I'm gonna hold calibrate for three seconds. 
Okay, I'm gonna do that one again. That was a little weird, it just said end. I missed the word calibrate. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna hold calibrate. There it goes, I see cal. 8.39, it jumps around. 9.20, it's close. SA, done. Okay, take it out, I rinse it off. Now you can repeat this process to try to get the accuracy a little better, because as you can see, some of it was off a little. So I'm gonna go in here, stir this around. I'm gonna hit calibrate, I'm gonna hold it for three seconds. There it goes. Boom, 6.87, a lot better. Saving, end. Take it out, rinse it off, put it in the 4.01. And it says reading 4.00 and it's jumping around a little bit. It's gonna balance out. We'll hold the calibrate, let go. Okay, I think I held it a little too long. We're gonna try it again. And it saved something, I don't know what it saved. We're gonna rinse it off and do it again. So I hold the calibrate down here. One, two, there it goes. We'll give it a second. So it's 3.44, it jumps up to 4.00, saves it, that's the SA, end. It's done. Give it a second, rinse it off. We're gonna go back up to 9.18. Okay, I'm gonna hold calibrate, it's 9.11, that's pretty good. Oops, it's saying end again, we're gonna give it a second. Okay, I'm gonna hold calibrate, one, two, there it goes. 9.20. To be honest, it probably is, for some reason, the solution's probably off a little, but I'm good with that. Now that it's calibrated, we can use it. And yes, I'll put links down below on all this stuff from the packets that you're gonna need. Just buy some spare packets, trust me, you're gonna need them. 30 bucks, I mean, yeah, you want something that's science lab research quality, go ahead, drop a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand if you really want something amazing that's never needs to be calibrated, I don't know. I've seen some of the medical ones that are much more expensive saying they need to be calibrated a couple times a day, which is kind of scary. I'm gonna turn this thing off. Do not rub the sensor, that sensor. Only rinse it with distilled water. If you need to store it, there's this stuff called electrode storage solution. I'll let you kind of see it there. And you put just a tiny bit in the end here, which has a sponge, and you put it in there. That way the electrode is touching that and it stays moist at all times. Do not use tap water, do not rinse with anything else. And when you use it on your wart to check pH, Rinse it off immediately with what? Distilled water. It's easy. It's not a big deal. And for 30 bucks, I would rather take care of something for 30 bucks than have to spend 30, 30, 30 or more. So very simple, easy pH meter. It works. It's reliable. It does a good job. I don't know if it's quite as accurate as they say it is where it says 0 0.01, knowing that some of the documentation mentions 0 0.03. But if it's gonna get me really close to the ballpark and I'm not gonna to have to spend a couple hundred dollars, I'm good with it. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and keep sharing. Huge, thank you.